Hey everybody, here's a quick tutorial about using the new mastering plugin in the audio mixer for Adobe Premiere Pro CC or CC 2014. First of all, I'm going to show you where my audio mixer here is in this project. It's, it's up in this upper left hand quadrant. And what I typically do, and this is just me, I'm not suggesting you do this, but I have limited real estate on a kind of a low resolution monitor here. I'm going to disconnect this thing and I'm going to bring it all the way over here to the side. This way I can see my mixer completely and, and I can pull it completely out of the way when I don't need it. And I like that. I usually get rid of this tool thing too because I, I use keyboard shortcuts and I don't need the the tools there okay so I also get rid of this little audio thing here don't need that either if I'm going to be monitoring it in my mixer here all right okay so here I have a project with several audio tracks um, this is about a five minute long piece and there's sound effects and there's music and there's all kinds of stuff there's narration by two different narrators in here and I have sweetened things a bit if I open up my mixer here you'll see what I'm talking about here and just a little twirly down here this is where we can use some plugins you can see on channels one and two where, where the speech is I've included reverb I've put a multi-tap delay over here some EQ and a multi-band compressor uh, way over here now, uh, if we go down, you see some other effects here on this track here, which I believe is uh, some music. But you'll see a mastering plugin here. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this so I can show you how I put that in. This mastering plugin is actually from Adobe Audition, and it's for use now as a plugin with Premiere Pro. Pretty cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is go down to Special and choose Mastering. And when I double click on this, it's going to open up the Mastering window. Let's see what we have here. We have something that looks like an EQ, but with only three bands. We have reverb. We have an exciter. We have a widener, a loudness maximizer, and our final output gain. Let me show how I'm going to adjust this for this particular project. First of all, you can see the EQ has been, I've, I've sweetened the high end a little bit, and I've made a little bit of a dip in the mid range, and the, the low end I've left pretty much alone. This is how you enable those three functions. You can see that when you click on one of these, you have the ability to widen uh, the cue on that or, or, or uh, narrow it up, depending on what you like. It's all you listen, you listen back, and you see what you like. Uh, anyway, so this is just done according to my taste. Now over here in this section, reverb, I don't want any. I've got my reverb all set up just the way I want it. Exciter, this is very important actually. In the exciter, this is an effect that was introduced back in the, in the 70s. There's a, a lot of rock bands used to use this, like Journey and stuff like that. It's going to give you the appearance of having a, a nicer high end, a, a, a more sibilant sound, and maybe introducing what they call air into the mix. But the, pro the problem with it is a little bit goes a long, long way. I doubt that under most circumstances you're going to want to use more than 20% of this effect. Uh, and then there's three presets for it, retro, tape, and tube. And you'll hear subtle differences in there. I, I like tube, so that's what I use. Stereo widening effect. I don't need that at all. I'm not touching it. Loudness maximizer. Well, this depends on your soundtrack. If you have correctly mixed your soundtrack, uh, you may not need to use this at all. You may just have it down at zero. If you want to make it a little hotter, you want to maybe compress it a little bit, this is what the loudness maximizer is going to do. And then over here on output gain, I usually set this to minus one so that I know that I'm absolutely not going to go into any kind of distortion. I don't believe I'll go into distortion at zero either, but that's just me. And again, this is just me. Using this mastering effect will definitely give you a, depending on how you adjust it, a more refined audio sound in your, for your finished mix. So experiment with that until you get something you like. Alright now let's watch a little bit of this video and we'll turn the mastering on and off and I don't know if you're going to be able to tell a big difference in a video like this or not but we'll just check it out and see what you think. Alright here we go. Let's get to a point where somebody's actually saying something. A figure walking through the mist with a rifle in his That's hand. That's on turned on his clothes were torn and dirty as he stood there by the bed he took off That's his three-cornered hat and speaking low he said we fought a revolution to secure your life we wrote the Constitution as a shield from tyranny for future generations this legacy we gave 
to make you the land of the free and home of the brave. Well, I hope that uh, is a good demonstration for you. That's the audio mastering plug-in for Adobe Premiere Pro CC and CC 2014. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.